Osmosis is very important in plants, and especially in plant cells. Osmosis in plants drives a process known as transpiration, which is a process that we're going to see in a few minutes. But before we get into details about how osmosis drives transpiration, let's talk about the different states of cells regarding water. Now, in a plant cell, if more water escapes than the water that enters the cell, then this cell is going to be shrink or it's going to get plasmolized. This is because of osmosis. Imagine that outside we have low water potential and inside we have high water potential. So the water will go from high into low. So that's why more water will move outside. In the second picture, which is a state known as flaxid, the amount of water that enters the cell is equal to the amount of water that leaves the cell. So in this case, the cell, the plant cell, stays in a flaxid form. Now, the last one is the turgid. This case is the opposite of the first one and is when more water moves inside the cell than the water that leaves the cell. Now, turgid, it's a kind of pressure. This kind of turgid state will create a tergor pressure inside the cell. Now, this pressure, it's very, very important in plant cells. And generally, plant cells must be found in this form, in a turgid form, where more water will move inside, so lots of pressure will get created in the inside. Now, remember that plants do not have a heart, so there is no a pump to actually create pressure and push the blood so it can deliver the nutrients and oxygen to all of the parts of animals. In plants, the only solution, the only way that they can create pressure, it's through osmosis by creating tergor pressure. Now, tergor pressure, it's very important because it will be responsible for moving the water and the different nutrients to all parts of the plant. Now, plants do not have arteries or veins, but they have similar things known as xylem vessels and phloem vessels. Now, phloem vessels are responsible for transporting nutrients, but xylem vessels are responsible for transporting water. Mainly, we are going to talk about the xylem vessels and how exactly xylem vessels can transport water into different parts of the plant. But to see this, we need to talk about a process known as transpiration. So imagine this is the soil, okay, surrounding cells. The first cells that actually meet the water that can be found inside the soil are known as the, as the root hair cells. These cells here, the root hair cells, can absorb water from the soil so they can transport it to the rest of the plant. These root hair cells have a mechanism to keep their water potential low. So the soil will have high, therefore more water will move inside the, hair, the root hair cells. When too much water moves inside here, it creates high water potential here, and it's higher than the rest of the cells or the adjacent cells. So this cell is going to have low water potential if you compare it with this. So the water will move here. Upon the water moving inside this cell, then from low water potential, it goes directly into high. This cell will have low, so water will move again to the next cell. This one from low will go again to high. This one here will have low and water will move in again. So we have like a cascade of events. It's like a domino effect, if you like, making the water move from one cell to the next. Now, the, the water at the end will enter the xylem vessel, okay? So this is the xylem vessel. Now, because of different properties inside the xylem, plus from different features of the water, the xylem can transport the water upwards towards the top of the tree or towards the leaves. Now, at the top of the tree, heat from the sun, okay, so imagine that here we have the sun. So heat from the sun will start 
evaporating the water. So water will start escaping from the leaves through the stomata and as this happening more water moves upwards. When more water reaches the leaves then the water from the leaves evaporates again pushing more water to move upwards. This process is known as transpiration and transpiration is responsible from moving water from the roots to the top of the tree. So imagine that when the water evaporates it becomes a gas. So it kind of works like a straw. So when you want to drink like a soft drink with a straw you are taking the air out so the liquid will move through the straw. The same ha happens here. So the water evaporates creating gas so the gas is removing causing more liquid to move towards the, the stem of the tree and reach the leaves.